She seizes him and kisses him. Come, let us take our fill of love till the morning. Let us delight ourselves with love, for my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. Obviously, if you find this information in a book that your son is reading, you will not allow him to read. You will tell him this book is no good, man. Here is another book about some other stories that don't contain uh, sexual content. So obviously, and I'm only quoting, believe me, very limited things. I, I, I don't want to go to the things that are way more uh, offensive or even more depressing to, to, to say that these are, this is inspired by God, you know. But these are among some. There are similar examples which I will not quote, and I did not memorize them because I do not see any benefit in memorizing such statements because they are clearly not from God. So that's why I'm reading from the paper. Uh, the Psalms of Solomon, in uh, chapter 4, verse 1, there's a, uh, it's all about flirtation, you know, uh, something that is just way beyond me to, to quote. Furthermore, we have some contradictions. Unfortunately, such as the genealogy of Jesus. Actually, it's of Joseph. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 18, it says that the genealogy of Jesus, the genealogy of Jesus contains 28 names of his fathers. Father of Joseph is Jacob. Okay, 28 names, and finally it says that the father of Joseph is Jacob. In Luke chapter 3, verses 23, and the genealogy of Jesus, it contains 42 different names. And if you know mathematics, the difference between 28 and 42 is how much? 14 maybe? 28 plus 12 is 30. That's 40. Something like that. 14. Of the fathers of Jesus, then we find in Matthew that the father of Joseph is Hela. So now, we have two biblical texts. One saying that the father of Joseph is Jacob. And one says it's Hela. H-E-L-I. That's one of the ways it is pronounced. So then a person may ask, then who is the father? Which one do we take? That in Matthew or that in Luke? And if the Bible was inspired by God through the Holy Spirit to the scribes who are writing it, which one was getting more inspiration? Which one made an error? Is it possible that both are correct? Can your father be Muhammad and Rabia at the same time? And they're two different individuals? Logically, no. Now you can try to try to zigzag your way around there, but at the end of the day, you know, people don't digest that kind of stuff. So uh, this is an indication that the Qur'an, although the Christians believe in the books, the belief in the current books that they have is inaccurate because they believe in books which have not been preserved by God. They've had human beings add their own opinions, ideologies, and you know their own uh, theological understanding of things based on their denomination. When you read the Quran, Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Do they not reflect upon this Quran? Had it been from other than Allah, they would have found within much contradictions and differences. Subhanallah. Re reflect upon the Quran, you will not find what I just quoted earlier. An indication that if you do find contradictions within the book, it is no longer from God. So then the only people who truly believe in the scriptures of God are the Muslims, because we believe in the Quran and the Gospel of Jesus, which we do not have, and the Torah of Moses, which we do not have, and the Psalms of David, which we do not have, and the scriptures of Abraham, which we do not have. But we believe. Whereas the other side, they reject the Qur'an, which cannot be rejected, which should not be rejected, which if someone does reject it, 
he has guaranteed destruction for himself or herself in this life and in the hereafter. Because they are rejecting a, re a revelation from God. Furthermore, they affirm and accept scriptures which they attribute to God. Although when they read them, they find content similar to what I quoted to you. Which does not, your mind does not allow you to believe that God will be quoting the incident of a woman telling a man, come to my house, my husband is not at home. And other things which I will quote when we come to the belief in the messengers. So really, you make the judgment. I'm only presenting information. And I don't want to uh, you know, go beyond that. I just want to present information with some elaboration if necessary. So we've dealt with the belief in God, the belief in the angels, and the belief in the scriptures. Then what about the belief in the messengers? The messengers of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he described his messengers, he says, Naked on the floor. How are the people 